I'm feeling like a lot of people are feeling helpless lately with nonstop bad news. Um, and even ADD has reduced our resistance, not our resistance, but our capacity for nuance and for empathy. You know, if you are moving from moment to moment and avoiding a pause, consider that neurologists tell you that the pause is where the memory is, becomes entrenched and it's where emotion is synthesized after the event in the pause. You, 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 if you don't go down, you can't feel the going up again. So in this era where every pause is filled with checking your phone, when porn, when you skip to the cum shot, you know, from cum shot to cum shot to cum shot, you know, and if there's no pause, the orgasm is, feels like nothing. And the same with, with joy, the same with sadness. If you never stop, you go, you can never feel fully. So my goal at times is to create pauses more than create the actual thing between the pauses, which some would call things or <laughs> events or words or, or, uh, or just sounds in this case with the podcast. I was very careful of like, this needs to be 24 more frames of pause. I use the film term because there's 20 fra 24 frames per second. Um, I said the audience is not feeling it because they don't have enough time to pause. So I'm the, the art of the pause is what I'm encouraging now. Anthem is the name of our series. Every season will be a different musical in probably 10 episodes. And our first season is called Homunculus. My character, Kean, is a down and out failed writer in a trailer park in the Midwest who's run out of insurance and he's got a brain tumor. And the tumor, one of the names of a kind of tumor he has is homunculus, which is Latin for little man. And the tumor becomes a character. Uh, but my character's online. He's doing an app-based telethon to crowdfund his treatment. This piece is really more about me. It's really more of an alternative autobiography. The character is, became really me if I never left my small town, what would I be like? So I wrote it as a TV series. It was too weird for Hollywood, you know, the resting pitch faces and, you know, on desks across LA were saying no. And a company called Topic Studios said yes in New York to it as a podcast. It was an old form that is being rebooted for today. Um, you know, audio theater has always been a traditional part of radio uh, and has sort of been forgotten. And except for some comedy, let's say. But this, I really wanted something more like cinema of the mind. Obviously, it's much cheaper, though we may be one of the more expensive podcasts ever made because of the density of it. Um, and it's really something that we want, to, we want to push the podcast form into a more, you know, complex, nuanced, dense, fictional place. I'm used to theater. I'm used to, to novels. You know, the words and the music evoke images. You know, if, if sometimes a thousand words is better than a picture, too. Otherwise, we wouldn't have... Dostoevsky and Nabokov and, you know, being lasting so long. I'm, all, I'm a word person, you know, I'm a, I'm a music person, but I love words. You know, when people say films shouldn't, shouldn't be too wordy and, you know, it's like, why not? You know, Eric Romer, the, so many great filmmakers, they're word-based. So in our case, when there is an image that's important to see uh, for our listeners to in vision, we have characters that describe them in a poetic way, which is, of course, the ancient form of prose <laughs> and poetry. 
uh, that evoke images and evoke other feelings and other senses. I think the, one of the reasons podcasts are very popular right now, because it's a bit of counter, counterintuitive in this day and age of, of peak uh, sensory overload, is that people are finding one sense is just fine. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're overloaded. I wrote it all as a theater piece first, and then wrote it as a all as a television series, and then adapted it for podcasts. So I've had a lot of time to parse it, to do readings, to edit the hell out of it. And it's that kind of time is really needed for something this dense. I think one of the reasons a lot of, you don't get, you know, as many wunderkinds uh, on YouTube in a narrative way is because it requires a lot of skills. It's not just music or just visuals or just acting or just comedy. It's all of those things, including the talents of production, which is, oh my God, how do you get it onto screen or onto a camera? And that requires patience. It's an ADD world. A lot of young people, patience is not always the strong suit. In fact, the spontaneous, you know, shoot myself for Instagram is, you know, the main form, format of the moment. And that doesn't always allow for the complexity of, of real narrative storytelling. It, it, it can make for something fun and exciting and funny. Uh, but the kind of stuff, the literary kind of stuff that I like requires a lot of time and patience. And patience is not you know, really something that's honored anymore, I find, uh, in pop culture and certainly not in politics lately. So I'm a tortoise as opposed to a hare and I like to, you know, think it through and gather my thoughts and, and hammer away and sculpt it, which is what I've been doing for the last year and a half. Mm -hmm.